Hello! Today we will be looking at how to install and set up the Minecraft mod Schematica. I've added a table of contents to the description so that you can skip directly to the part you need, or you can just watch the whole thing. So let's get to it. First, you'll need to, to acquire the mod and its supporting mods. You'll need the mod versions that are compatible with the version of Minecraft that you intend to use. Schematica currently isn't available for 1.13, it just hasn't updated yet, so we'll be working with the 1.12.2 version today, but this method I'm going to show you should work for previous versions of Minecraft as well. The links that I'm using are as are also in the description, so you can go ahead and follow along with me as we go through this. Now, first, um, it's always a good idea to check the mod itself to be sure that you have all the dependencies that it needs. So we have um, Forge and Lunatrius also listed here um, as its requirements, so it's the only things we need. So let's just go ahead and get Minecraft Forge. Uh, and the link that I've provided, you'll have to scroll all the way down to the bottom, well, nearly all the way down, and I'm just going to use the EXE, but you could also use either of the other two versions. Either one is fine. This is the one I'm going to use. You'll want to save it um, in an easy place to remember. I'm just going to put it in my downloads folder. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get Schematica, which is the download links are just beneath the how to install, so we'll go ahead and get that one as well. And it'll take you to this page. It has a download button, it's the gray one at the top of the page. And you'll go ahead and save it in the same spot. Just in the downloads folder is just fine. And We'll do the same for the Lunatrius core. Scroll down to the bottom where it says download links and get the 112.2 version and download it and save it in the same folder just so that it's all in the same spot. And it says that all of these have finished downloading, so I'm going to go ahead and Dismiss those. Don't need that page. This is an ad. Okay, and actually, you can keep these tabs for future reference, that's fine, but we don't need them anymore at this moment. So we're going to go ahead and open the downloads folder and install Forge. Double click on this here and it's actually quite easy, so we want it for the Minecraft client. So we'll go ahead and install client, and whatever it says here in this path to Minecraft, there's no need to change that part either. It's going to download them, and while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and open up my Minecraft launcher, and we'll wait for this to complete because this part, this step has to finish before we can move on to the next step. Hey, look at that. Congratulations. Okay, now in your launcher, uh, it might look like this, and it might look like this, but if it looks like this, just go ahead and click on the three bars, and go into Launch Options, and we'll add a new version. Um, and I like to pick out a fancy block so that it's not the default so I can remember later. And we're going to go into the version and pick out the one that says Forge and it's going to be down at the bottom of the list. Oops, I jumped the gun. We can't open the Minecraft folder, the launcher, until it actually finishes installing. I forgot about that. Okay. Now, you see it down at the bottom. Release 112.2-forge-112.2-this long number. Might be different. It's just the version of Forge that was installed. 
Let's go ahead and pick out those bricks again, and let's name it something that we'll remember what it means later. I like to use the version of Minecraft plus Forge. And I've done this a couple of times, and that seems to be the easiest way to remember what it means later. So we'll go back over out of launch options, and next to the play button there's a green up arrow, and we'll select the version that we just added with the icon that we selected, and we'll click that play button, and it will do all sorts of fancy things to the Minecraft jar file, which is just the f file that it's the game. And everything that Minecraft does is contained in that jar. So this step is going to take a second because it's the first time that Forge has been added to Minecraft on your computer. So there's lots of things that it needs to change. But this step should not take a long time every time you do it. It might be taking a while, on my version because it's the first time that I've opened up Minecraft. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording here so that you don't have to sit through this process. Now, in the mods folder, oh, I forgot. <laughs> I haven't turned the sounds off. Anyway, um, now something interesting there's the mod folder is inside a file tree that's currently hidden if we went and we tried to find it um, we wouldn't be able to find it um, but there's there's an easy way and a hard way to find the mods folder the easy way is to go into options resource packs and then to open the resource pack folder and that takes you directly into the Minecraft folder that you need. Normally the app data folder is hidden so you can't see it unless you change some fancy setting but I don't think it's necessary. Um, and for this, we'll just open the mods folder, open the downloads folder in a new window so that we can take Lunatrius Core and drag it over, and Schematica and drag it over. And there you go. Now you have Lunatrius Core and Schematica already in your, mo your mods folder and you are ready to go. Now, what I suggest is you click on roaming folder in the uh, in this bar here, right click on your Minecraft folder, and pin to quick access. That's this section over here, and it appears in every file explorer window. So when I do that, I can be out here somewhere else, go directly into my Minecraft folder again, and that makes everything a lot easier in the future. Now, we have to, we do have to relaunch the game because we added mods to the game, so while that process is completing, I'm going to pause the recording again so that you don't have to watch it because my computer is quite slow and I don't want to make you suffer through that. So we will be right back. Okay, and everything has loaded back up. I went ahead and created a new world so that I can show you how to set up your schematica mod. I'm <clears throat> gonna go ahead and yep, open it to LAN just so that I can be able to fly around and show you guys some some things. Now I 
I was not able to find listed anywhere online the controls for how to use Schematica, but the good news is it is already inside your options and controls menu. If you just scroll down all the way to where it says Schematica, these are the default hotkeys and they work pretty well. Some people rebind them to things that are more memorable, but this works just fine. Um, you don't need to set anything else um, because all the other things are accessible through other menus. Um, so let's go ahead and get a schematic of... Let's go ahead and get this chapel up here. Um, it's kind of attached to the mountain, um, and that's that's just fine. So we'll go ahead and um, the save schematic button is default attached to the multiply key on your numpad. So in order to see the uh, the saving points, it'll have you have to turn it to on or off. So let's go ahead and get um, this schematic here. Oops, misclicked. And let's go ahead and sink this down into the mountain. And oops expand it just like that a little bit. Um, that's actually probably too much to get just the chapel, but it gets the point across fairly well. So let's go ahead and save it. Chapel. Save. There we go. Now let's move it down here. And to do that we'll use the load schematic load schematic button. Default, that's divide. Yeah, see it here in chapel. There we go, and it is in. And, yep, it's still connected to the mountain because that was part of the box that we selected. So it's kind of weird to have it floating. So now we want to manipulate it. And that's default subtract. So we can move it around, move it to the left, move it closer, move it down or up, or you can just move here. And that's a little bit, that's close, but I think I want to have it not on top of the field. Let's get it a little bit closer to the road. and. It'd be really cool if we could have the door in front, so let's go ahead and rotate it around. One more, and there we go. And the door is, well, a little hard to reach, so we'll move it down a little bit. Perfect. Now, you'll notice here that there's some uh, different shading on these blocks. The ones that are missing have a blue tinge. The ones that are there and should be something else have a, uh, a purple tinge. And the ones that are there and... Oops. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, the ones that are there and should be air are tinged with red. Alright, so those are the uh, explanation of the the coloring. Now one of the things that you can do if you're in a single player world or um, on a, uh, a creative world where you're building with friends, you can turn on the printer function which is this button over here in the manipulate schematica page or window I guess. Uh, and the printer on and now just to clarify this function is disabled on EMC because it's it's an unfair advantage um, but you can see how it uh, it just builds very very quickly so it's it's a pretty good option if you have something that you want to just put into the world really quickly 
Uh, let's go ahead and turn that one off. One of the other things that you can do with Schematica is you can look at something by layers. And this one, well, all the layers that I'm looking at currently are down in the ground, so let's look at higher layers. Oops. I went too quickly. I didn't let it load in. So you can see that it's one by one. And you can also look at something with that layer and everything below it so that you can kind of look at it and see what you have and what you still need to work on. Um, another interesting thing that you can do with Schematica is you can flip it on its head. Uh, and it looks kind of funky. It's it's really funky with a, uh, a house, but with something where you're building a sphere or a heart and you want to flip it upside down, then um, it doesn't look that bad. Now, one of the other things that you can do is you can use a schematic that somebody else has created. So you'll load, you'll go to the load schematic for, uh, screen, open the schematic folder, um, and that's just inside your Minecraft folder if you have an easy way of getting to it like we have here. It's just inside schematics. And this is the folder where you'll put all the schematics that you download from someone else. I have already gotten one from someone else. I just found it through Google. So I'm going to take it from my downloads folder and move it into schematics. And one of the nice things is you don't have to restart your game just to load in a new schematic. And let's go somewhere a little bit more open so that you can see. Oh, gracious, I forgot which buttons do what. Move here and you can see this big beautiful fountain. I wonder if I still have that page open. I do, in fact. Um, it was very very easy to find, um, but usually people use that method for um, very fancy builds where they are sharing it um, between friends. So they can all work off of the same uh, schematic file. As always, if you have any questions, um, feel free to let me know. Um, but I hope this has been very helpful for you. And I hope that you have a fantastic day. One final quick note that I did want to mention that I forgot initially is the ability to see the materials that your build will require and how many you have left to place. Um, and there's actually a built-in feature for that in Schematica in the Manipulate Schematic screen or Move Schematic. There's the Materials button and then you can see um, listed out very neatly you can see how much is required in the build and how much you've already placed. So here there's 85 pieces of cobble already placed and a lot more to go. But I just wanted to let you guys know that because this feature makes gathering all the materials for a build a lot easier so that you can tell exactly what you'll need before you even get started. Ooh, tunnel vision.